What is up, everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. I got a rapid review for you. Let's get into it. All right, guys, we got a few models that we're going to be taking a look at today. I'm going to move them over to the side. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and get the one that I think that you're probably going to be least interested in out of the way first. And that is going to be the Axial Alpine. So this one is a very interesting one. You got a nice fold over style Kydex sheath with an Alti clip that comes with it. Um, interesting colors that come with it as well. Very nice for your pocket carry, but you could always switch it out if you wanted to carry this um, scout carry or something like that over your appendix, over your back. If you wanted a different style clip, it would work really, really well. But you have pretty much a uh, what I would call almost four finger grip for me i do hang off the back a little bit there you do get these and i think they come in micarta or titanium with the inlays these are going to be a little bit more expensive they are usa made full tang magna cut steel if i recall correctly on this one uh, my editor may have to remind me it's been a minute got a geared back spacer and then you can check any video out there on how to remove these but there's a tool that comes with it and you kind of just push it down and it pops the magnetic piece off and you can switch it for a different inlay if you would like this one had the lanyard on it with the bead on the back i'm not much of a lanyard person but this could come in handy if you wanted to grab on this to pull the knife out but it would be swinging so again i'm not really big on just lanyards for decor on the back now this one here has been through the pass around and i have noticed that even though the edge is sticky i can definitely feel where it's been cut with and it feels like there's a little bit of damage to the blades edge itself i didn't actually cut with this one um, just because this particular one for me I'm not very interested in it for I can't quite choke up like I would like to uh, it's a little bit heavy for me for a pocket fixie and just to kind of show you the difference here it's a little bit smaller than my Asher knives little bro coming in at 3.7 ounces my little bro which is going to be a more full-size knife with the g10 scales on here is coming in at 3.9 so and just to show you the size difference between the two and why I say the shift is is not really for me um, it does have a clip point blade on it not quite as far as a utility blade and drop point um, it is a little bit smaller and then the girth on here just a little bit thinner overall so i really like the uh, contoured scales and the feel of the little bro in hand and then the blade shape on that one this one here reminds me a little bit of the vosteed mink as far as the blade shape goes, um, the handle's a little bit different, but the build quality is very nice. It is USA made, which is definitely a bonus for it. And again, it's not an awful weight considering that you're using titanium scales here, but I think the micarta would feel a little bit better. I would like for it to be just a little bit thicker through the index piece here um, and I think that would help a little bit here there's a little bit of sharpness here I feel like if you could file that down it would be a lot better for me but that is the Alpine from Axial Shift overall very nice and uh, the Kydex sheath does fit very nicely on it all right let's keep it going the next one here I really wanted to check out the TPK exclusive penguin with the smooth altum and then the hollow ground s90v this one here a little bit of a smaller knife as well for me three and a half fingers penguin has always kind of been like that but most penguins don't come with the flipper tab so you can choke up on a little bit and then for me i can get all four fingers on there the traditional pocket knife exclusive button lock version though comes with the flipper tab and thumb studs which is nice because you get multiple means of deployment and they really did a fantastic job dialing this button lock in. The action's very smooth, little side to side. And again, it's been through the pass around group, so that could have something to do with it. Yeah, that pivot was way, way loose. Let me make sure I didn't over tighten it. A little too tight. Let's back it out just slightly. Let's see, that was a little bit of movement. Let's see now. There we go. Yep. Dial. That's much better in my opinion. Uh, a little bit more controlled. Man, they did a good job with that one. Very, very good job. Very smooth bearings on these. 
all of the ones that I have seen with the bearing action on the um, it, the more premium version of the button locks have been really well dialed. And this is a very thin hollow grind on here. If you have medium to large hands, these versions that are coming out at traditional pocket knives, um, I think this one might be sold out, so I'm sorry for showing it. But if they come with more versions of these, you definitely want to pay attention and grab them because they're usually really good prices. And I like traditional pocket knives. You know, Austin's a really nice guy. He's been a pleasure to work with, a joy to talk to. And I really just like the fact that he just goes out there and does stuff that you don't normally see from manufacturers. You can even see the button lock spring where it's nested into the Altum here. That's really cool on this one. Hopefully you were able to grab one of these, but these versions are absolutely fire. I like them. And again, money for value and build quality and heat treating everything that you're getting out of QSP, really good. They've always done a fantastic job. Let's keep it going. Next up, we're looking at the Dark Bolt Arcus. This one is pretty interesting here. You got contoured G10 scales with hollowed out steel liners on the inside, but this is a uh, nested or this is a liner lock with a little bit of a party trick here. So it has a, a little arm that comes out and acts like a button and that arm pushes the liner lock over for disengagement. So you can both use the liner lock and you can also use the button lock on here. So isn't that pretty wild? Um, you got a very nice hollow ground blade here. It doesn't go the full length of the blade. I think if they could have done that, just bring the hollow ground all the way up to here, that would have made it even better. But as it sits, it's pretty slicey. Uh, I really do like that about this knife. You got very generic thumb studs on here. I mean, they have no milling, nothing they're chamfered on the edges here you know just very plain jane no thrills no frills on those thumb studs so that is pretty wild also i would have liked to have seen this flipper tab um reversed have the uh i know they did that because it kind of contours there but i would rather have had the flat here and then the contour on this side because when you flip it over that would have made this be the top of the flipper tab and i think it would have worked a little better adversely you could have just added a little bit of jimping here just like you have on this front top flipper here that's perfect jimping and it would have worked really well but if you go to push button it i think that really is the best way to use that flipper tab as opposed to trying to light switch it um, the light switch you kind of got to dig in and pull down and it works and the detent's good enough for it to work but i think the push button really works the best on this particular one thumb stud action very good because again you have a liner with a detent so you have a actual detent on this one and the front flipper works really good on here as well i have seen some that have smaller hands mention that they felt that flipper tab kind of hitting their hand for me when i'm grabbing because of my larger hands down here on the pocket clip i'm completely out of the way of that so it doesn't hit me at all and then the top flipper works very nice because they took that aggressive jimping all the way around. So you're able to kind of, or I guess it's the front flipper wrap around, but you can do the reach around a little bit harder to do the uh, slide index. And it is, if I'm honest, it's so aggressive that it's actually a little sharp to do that. But you can do it for sure. Comfortable ergos in hand, great useful utility blade shape. So the pinch grip on here works for detailed cut and detailed work. And just a very interesting knife. I wonder if they could move the button up a little bit and kind of nest it into... Yeah, I think they could. Oh, actually, you know what? The button is directly on the liner. So I wonder if they could like L-shape the liner and bring the button up just a little. It doesn't have to be much, but maybe move it up here and over the pivot. So maybe you could do like a L with a little bit of a trail off here so that it could still work. And I think you could tuck it. I think there's enough meat on that flipper tab that you could tuck it there. It's not a deal breaker or anything like that. I don't think I even noticed when I was handling it and cutting with it that I was hitting that button. I think I'm okay. Uh, Left-handed, I definitely am feeling it. So moving, you know, coming up with that and over a little bit, just kind of, you know, come straight to where the liner ends because that's where it's meeting. 
and then this cutout piece that you have here if you could just do like a little bit of a start of an s and put the button over here it'd be out of the way um, it's not reversible but you could make this reversible and it would be really easy for lefties to use this everything's super comfortable on it but that is the uh the arcus let's keep it going all right, last but not least is going to be the updated Lush version 2 from Devo Knives. This also is a traditional pocket knives exclusive, and I would say they absolutely got concept to dial this in beautifully, guys. Uh, the reason I really like this is because Camo Carbon actually started to add more color to their scales. They added, I think, 20% more color, so you're not getting hit or miss scales with no pop of color sometimes like my first version of this 80s camo carbon had zero pop of color it was just little tiny grains here and there that you would see um, because it is slightly contoured so you weren't seeing the color on there so i'm glad to see that camo carbon as a whole is updating this but what devo did they didn't make any real changes they just brought this one straight back to market they got more scale colors and options, and they got more options, period. But they had Concept make an improvement, and compared to both my 80s and my Arctic Storm versions, I would say that this detent on here is probably about 30, 35% stronger, and that's really all that it needed. It's very satisfying to reverse flick. It's extremely strong now for that front flip. I mean, that is super satisfying to do now. So I really do like that. And then the top flipper for me has always been more of like a grab it and roll it. And I would say this is definitely improved because I was able to easily fail that doing doing using the top flipper only. Um, now, I still have that issue, and I can't remember where it was that Kevin was like, if you're going to do the thumb on the top, you got to hit this certain spot. But I can hit it. Uh, on occasion from the top there if I just roll with it. So I am going to try to strengthen the lock bar on this one a little bit today. So if you'd like to stick around and check that out, uh, by all means, definitely feel free to do so. But I, I do know that that is going to cause this to be almost like ripping the meat off of my thumb for that front flipper. But I do want to try to go ahead and tune that a little bit here today does have race washers in here so no skiff swaps or anything like that so we're just going to be removing this side and um i think there's a hidden bolt here as well and i believe everything is t6 except the pivot let me see yeah t8 t8 and then everything else is t6 so hang out for a second if you'd like to see me take this out i'm just going to do like i said just a little light tune i want to see if i can get it to the point where I don't fail that anymore. Um, but really, truth be told, I, I really don't think that it needs it. Um, I think that just needs to be like a roll, and then that needs to be a front. And actually, I'm a little nervous to tune it. I think I'm going to wait a little while and just see before I decide to do that. So I apologize. If you want to see the disassembly of this and how I tuned my other one, uh, hopefully along the way you'll see in one of the corners where I did link that video. But I think I'm just going to leave that as a top flipper, uh, reach around, and then use the front flipper there for that. Because truth be told, I don't think I want it any stronger for this. It's very stout now for that front flip. And I mean perfectly tuned for the reverse flick now so they definitely dialed that in but that is everything today guys that is the lush that is the arc this is the tpk exclusive of the penguin button lock and then the alpine from axial shift if you have any questions about any of these let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed the video on your way out do me a favor hit that like button it does help the algorithm and if you're not subscribed consider subscribing I'd love to have you follow along special thank you to my channel members out there i love you guys i hope you have a fantastic week i'll catch you all on the next one peace